Hey guys, it's Drax. If you're a new player, you may be wondering how to make certs quickly in Planetside 2. Or maybe you have a few and you want to know how to invest them wisely so you can make even more in the future. I'm going to share what I know and hopefully make the game more fun for you and less of a grind. To start, we will look at this from the perspective of a new player. The game has been updated to make it easier for you to quickly build a character that is actually useful. So once you have completed the tutorial, you might spend a short amount of time on the starter continent of Kultir. This is a good place for helping players to get used to the basic mechanics of the game, whilst under a less stressful environment than the other populated continents. It can be quite empty and boring though, so you might want to move to the main continent and look for a medium 24-48 battle even before you hit battle rank 15. A good class to start with here is the Heavy Assault. I say the Heavy Assault as it has an overshield which protects you from damage when pressing F and the Nano Weave Armour is maxed out by default now thanks to game changes and this resists small arms damage by 20%. I did try starting with a support class but feel the Heavy overall is an easier start and you won't need to put any certs into this class to be competitive. You can also equip these two basic implants by default to assist you on any class. And basically the Heavy Assault gives you the ability to do damage to everything and that's how I recommend starting the game, shoot everything. Not friendlies though, every bit of damage you do will count towards assists or the kill. And just a note here while we're talking about kills, relating to starter weapons, most are excellent and very well balanced, some guns may look better but usually the starter weapons are the best all rounders and long time players will continually use them. So how much are these kills worth? Well, infantry are worth 100 XP, that's with no modifiers. If you get a high threat kill, this is worth 150 XP. And if you get an extreme menace kill, then that is worth 300 XP. 10 kills with any weapon also gets you a ribbon, which will net you an additional 250 XP. And the first five ribbons of the day are worth double, so it's always worth logging in to get at least those five. You get one cert for every 250 XP you earn. Kill assists are worth 25 XP, critical kill assists worth 50 XP, so two kills and a crit assist by default will net you one cert. Your rocket launcher is your armor killer, and armor is always worth a few certs for the kill. Even if you don't get the kill though, assist XP can be very good depending on the damage you have done. The launcher is also useful for taking down max suits. Max kills are worth 200 XP and vehicles range between 300 to 500 XP. As a new player during the start of the game you will get given 100 certs for each rank you go up until you reach battle rank 15 where you will have the chance to reset these certs. You will also be able to attack the basic directives which are fairly easy to complete and will net you an additional 200 certs. So when you have completed them and made a few certs from shooting at everything in what class do you invest those certs? A support class of course. And this is either the engineer or the combat medic. And I'll tell you why. In general play you can earn more common ribbons with these support classes on top of more XP per hour. You might think you should spread your certs out so you can be more versatile. But I strongly believe specialising will give you more enjoyment and net you more certs. The Heavy, Light Assault and Max are primarily killing classes and most of their XP and ribbons come from this. Accurate players who are good with positioning will make the most of these classes, although Maxes have more health and quicker killing weapons so you will last a bit longer by default. This class does require support though so if you are playing with friends or in a squad you will generally last a lot longer. If you were to choose the Infiltrator you get ribbons for kills and recon. You can make this work well using deployable or darts, especially around points with a high density of enemies like towers, but in general this isn't quite as efficient as the engineer or the medic. So let's talk about those support classes. The engineer has the ability to resupply via the ammo box which nets you 10 XP every mag it refills. Position is key and the ammo box can be started into to work better. After resupplying 50 times you will get a reward ribbon, but that's not it for the engineer. The class's biggest cert gain comes from his repair tool. This tool is located in the third slot and can be served into to enhance cooldown. You will gain 5 XP per tick and a ribbon given to you once you have repaired 15,000 damage. This works great if you are a vehicle player who needs to repair often, but for maximum cert gain the best option is to get behind a max suit. Set up in the corner of a building behind him and give repair and ammo when needed. Maxes often draw fire so maintain a safe distance and use caution when moving in for a repair. 
So that is one option for gaining certs, but my favourite and still the best in my opinion is the Combat Medic. The Medic has a combi tool which is known as the Applicator and can heal and revive friendly soldiers, both of which need doing often. This tool is located in the third slot and can be maxed to a rank of 6 to improve heal and revive time. The Applicator will revive your friendly to full health but in a slower or faster time depending on rank. The Combat Medic is the core of most good fights as the class enables friendly soldiers to get back up and keep defending or attacking a base. In most situations speed is key so ranking up the tool will help you greatly and will boost the amount of revives you can perform, boosting your cert gain. You will gain 10 XP per tick for heals and between 55 to 100 XP for revives. The Medic also has a nano regen device in its suit slot which has an aura that heals both you and friendlies in close proximity. This also will work towards healing ribbons. You must also not forget that you are a combat medic and you are allowed to shoot people. This class has the assault rifle and is more commonly called assault in other FPS shooters. Like the other classes 10 kills with a single weapon will get you a ribbon and the medic default weapons in general are fairly easy to use and accurate. Use your aura heal during fights to gain an advantage. When I start a new character which I have done several times I generally play heavy although I pit zero certs into this class. I save up until I can buy tier 4 nano weave on the medic and get the tool up to max. Then I also max out the regen device and this class is ready to use. I prefer the regen device over the shield bubble as it works on two levels, it helps you during and after a fight. The nano weave armor is also my preference but other suits can work well so research these a little before deciding. Note here though that Nano Weave and Flak are soon to be changed and the first tier will soon give you what is now the top tiers benefit. The rest of the tiers will give you added benefits and you can check that out in my combined arms armor changes video. Once you have more certs later on a revive grenade is a great purchase as it can revive a room full of people in one go and you can rack up tons of XP in very short amounts of time. So the Engineer is good but the Medic is best, both of these classes can also equip C4 to give them anti-vehicle capabilities. Instead of using med kits, which I do on most classes, you can heal yourself with the Medic's Aura, so C4 is a great option in this slot later on, which is what I use on my loadout. So that's the general guide and my go-to classes to gain the most certs as a new player, but here are some other points to increase your cert gain and make the most of planet side. Spam that Q key. Yes, spot everything. Even with the pause it has now, I kind of just spam it. You get a spot bonus when a friendly kills that target and a ribbon after 5 spot assists. Bring a Sunderer to the fight and deploy it at a good position. I won't give an in-depth positioning guide in this video, but just make sure it's in a place that won't get found too quickly. You don't need to put any certs into deploy, and once you do, friendlies can spawn in it while you're fighting in the base, giving you a passive 2 XP each spawn. You also get the AMS Deploy Ribbon upon 35 spawns. Boosts are a great way to increase your cert gain, but can be fairly expensive, so it's worth waiting for a sale. Usually buying the 6 month heroic boost on special sales such as the anniversary bundles works out much cheaper. If you don't want to buy boosts yourself, you can join squads where players have boosts running, and these boosts can help you buy 5% for each player who has one. So maybe asking Yelcha every so often to see if you can join a boost squad. When at bases either attacking or defending, capture points which can be flipped give a good chunk of XP in a short amount of time. If enemies are attacking a point, staying there and defending will give you extra XP. You also receive a point control ribbon after a certain amount of kills near the point. Capturing a base can give a decent amount of XP as well, but not if you are waiting around several minutes for the cap without kills. If a hex is overpop with your faction or no one is spawning at the base, move to another base with an actual fight to maximize cert gain. Next is positioning and this is to lessen your deaths by resetting. That means stay close to corners and cover using them to pop in and out of even mid fight if you think you might lose. Maybe say the other guy got the first headshot. Try to get more 1v1 situations to keep yourself alive for longer. The longer you stay alive and affect the battle, the more search you can gain. When the fight has died or very few enemies remain, check the map and move to a better fight when they are available. Fights of a population around 24 to 48 are usually the best and keep an eye on population so that it's balanced. Once again, shoot at everything, but this time I like to add with accuracy. The players with the best aim in this game tend to have an average mouse sensitivity of 800 dpi 
and in-game sensitivity of 0.125. I'm not saying this works for everyone and mine is set differently, but this is a good starting point for better aim. Higher sensitivity can make recoil harder to control and can be the difference between winner or losing in those 1v1s I mentioned or getting a kill on that aircraft that you're shooting out the sky. Join a squad or platoon whenever possible. You could benefit from the boost we talked about earlier and revives, heals, repairs, etc. will all give you bonus XP when performed on a squad member. If you're not part of an outfit, look for one that suits your gameplay. Outfits are a great way to get into squads and work as a team and teamwork is rewarded in Planetside. Remember each class weapon, tank and aircraft can shine in certain situations. Pulling the correct one at a certain time will maximise XP, but they can be costly to start into so I won't go into vehicles in depth in this video. Fighters can be hard to get grips with, but if you manage to, rocket pods combined with your default nose gun will allow you to pit out good damage on everything. Mining and depositing Quartium with the Ant can give surprisingly good amounts of XP. I'm not sure I would recommend this to a new player, but if you have a good amount of time into the game and fancy trying something a bit slower paced where you are less likely to die, this might be for you. My average earnings were around 20,000 XP per hour, however the constructed pieces are very expensive to start into, so helping another player with a base is probably a good idea to start with. For the final point I will mention membership which will give you an additional 50% on whatever you earn in game and a double XP weekend at the end of each month. If you play the game a lot and can afford this then I would recommend it. It cuts your grind time down and gives you other bonuses too. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it has given you a few tips to help boost your certs and increase your enjoyment in this game. This has been a brief overview. If you would like to see other videos on how to maximize your cert gain on specific classes or vehicles, let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe for more helpful videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.